Well, I got my one day a week of planting in yesterday till uh, Armageddon comes back. This spring is being a real bitch. Well, since it never quits raining, might as well work on uh, getting some stuff ready for harvest. Got to get it planted before we can harvest it, but trying to get ahead of the game since we got a million projects uh, for the summer. I've had uh, my new helper uh, helping for, I don't know, a week or so after school, working in the shop, uh, running the skid steer, picking up rocks in the field. He's been, been doing amazing. But I'm waiting for him to get here this afternoon to show him uh, what we got left here. But he's been working on this corn head, stripped it all down, and so he replaced the left side deck plates already. Just got to put the uh, right side ones in. The way these things pivot. See this pin goes in this pipe and then when the pipe moves this is bolted like that and the pipe pivots on it those things are always froze up and they'll get froze up so tight that when that pipe hydraulically moves it'll it'll bend this bracket so most all of those were frozen there we had to heat some of them to get them out but clean them up good and I see them the new deck plate on the right side I had to wait for these pieces that bolt on there um, because the original ones from the factory have this hook thing on them that's welded to the deck plate. These are original deck plates on, on this corn head. I've, I've taken them off once and like welded and ground down where they were worn the most, but see how they're like cut in bad right here? It just makes, uh, makes you lose kernels makes the head shell and last fall in season I thought it was going to make it through the season but these knives were all original from 2013 so you got three rolls that roll this roll and there's another roll right there that all spin together me and Jason who helps me in the fall put the entire kit in all all three rolls per you know per row came in a, a kit because these were worn down to nothing too and uh, and this one was these were all getting ready to peen over eight row corn head that kit to change uh, change these rolls, twenty five thousand bucks. Yeah. So we did that last fall, but we didn't have time to do the deck plates. So I ordered the deck plates over the winter, and we are replacing them right now. And I got all new gathering chains for it and the only other thing that I've seen is that gearbox seal is leaking so I gotta put a seal in that gearbox then this thing can get 
tucked in the corner of the shed and be completely rebuilt and ready to rock this fall. Colin, who's helping me, my new guy, he has also work, been working on this chisel. I bought this Glencoe 7400 chisel last fall. I know it's an old, old school chisel, but I'm all about old school anymore. And uh, this thing <laughs> did an awesome job. The guy I bought it from had put new blades, bearings, it repainted the whole thing. Um, new pivot pins and, and bearings, all new hydraulic hoses, every, every hose on it. And it has a six bar spike drag, which uh, Colin took all of that off last week and we're replacing all the the links of the drag because they're getting pretty worn i've got all the bars in the other shop because i had to do have to do some welding on them but we'll show you what we got going on here but this thing did great you can hydraulically uh adjust the the blades up and down your depth control is just a single point right here this is matched perfect for my 9230 steiger uh, it handled it real nice it's a nine shank i got rid of my uh expensive chisel i had uh a dominator and I bought this and I bought that big old chunk of old blue iron that's a 530b we were pulling that with the cat it handled it it knew it was back there but now we can rock two chisels at once we get a lot done I just bought that deck over equipment trailer on a auction a couple weeks ago we'll do a, a video on that we're gonna put a new deck on it and uh, repaint it but yeah so we're we're just gonna finish the drag up on this grease it the only other thing that I saw is you won't be able to see it but it's on that shank i had one of these um crack in the field last fall it's this one i welded welded the plate back together and then i welded this round bar on here to stiffen it up i'll have to take uh take that that one off and do the same thing i'm not sure if colin wants to be on youtube or not so uh i'll i'll see i kind of mentioned it to him and if he doesn't want to then he doesn't have to but that toolbox has been working out great it's coming really handy out in the field I'll I'll bring you guys back whenever we're either finishing finishing that up or putting the drag back on this. Well, it's the next day here. I brought the planter home. Didn't want it to get rained on anymore. It's a beautiful day out today, but uh supposed to rain again this afternoon it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow it just never ends on the magnum here there's i think there's around 60 or 70 hours that i've put on it so far this spring 
So I dropped the uh, engine oil. I'm gonna change the oil and filter since it's a, a brand new reman, just to get any metal out of it. That and uh, everything has been a-okay with this tractor other than it just doesn't seem like it has the horsepower that it should. Um, these are heavy planters, don't get me wrong, and, and they pull pretty hard, you know, especially on ground that has hills, but it never blows any black smoke at all. Like it doesn't matter if it's getting lugged down or if you're shifting, you know, gears going down the road. It just seems to me like it's starving for fuel. This injection pump is a case IH reman and a service manager at my dealer said that they all come like set the same on fuel almost like the way that the case h does it is you're supposed to put it on the dyno and adjust it to the right fueling for the the exact tractor that that pump's going on but he said he's found that they're normally set high but i didn't have time to take this before spring and get it dynoed and and whatnot so before i go and start turning the the screws to her i on the other side i undid the wastegate rod to make sure because it's a new turbo too to make sure that that wasn't adjusted wrong and it was like uh opening the wastegate with it shut and it wasn't um the transfer pump is new doesn't mean anything it, it could still be junk so uh, I'm gonna try to figure out a way to tie a fuel pressure gauge in to see the fuel pressure I changed the three fuel filters out in the field the other day just to, to see if they were getting plugged up or something and they're not there it didn't make any difference I put new ones on the fuel fuel tank is is venting. It's not. I checked, made sure that it wasn't like sucking with the the cap when you take the cap off. the The vent isn't plugged. So what I'm down to is either it's not getting enough fuel pressure, or it's not getting fuel flow I mean this is this is an original rubber fuel line that goes to the tank that you know it's it's old this is an old tractor so it could be like collapsing inside I might just pull a new fuel line through no matter what I might just pull that through and I think I will tap or tie in a uh, boost gauge where this uh, ether line goes and I can just temporarily run that up into the cab I won't be able to really put this thing under a load till I can get it back in the field to get a good boost you know uh, reading on it but uh, I'll tie a boost gauge to it. I'll change that fuel line. I know there's a fitting on these pumps right there. And I think there's like a check valve on the return. I don't know. Try to figure out fuel pressure and uh, tie a boost gauge to it. I'll change that line. 
and I guess we'll see what happens there. I'm taking all these uh, insecticide boxes off. I don't use insecticide and it makes it more of a pain to get to the to the row meters like when you're switching from corn to beans and uh, I've had two of them damn things fall off out in the field this spring and I don't want to lose one of them going down the road or something so I'm going to take them off and oil all the chains uh, grease it and give it a good uh, once over good news it's the next day it rained more it's been raining um, since last night pretty much all day it's freaking great but let's update what's going on here and over here corn head is completely done Cowan got all the new deck plates on all the new gathering chains the wear skids so this thing is ready to get put away and ready to rock this fall I put a seal in that gearbox, fix that. So, where did we leave off on this thing? I was talking about changing this fuel line, which I did. I ran a new diesel rated fuel hose. I didn't see anything, you know, wrong with the old one, but that doesn't mean it's not collapsing on the inside. I had to figure out how to tie fuel pressure gauge in. So I ended up uh, sacrificing this metal fuel line that goes from the lift pump to the filter base. I Took a tubing cutter and cut it so I could uh, put a loop in to tee in the gauge. So I just ordered a new metal line, but the book says fuel system operating pressure 20 to 25 psi. So let's see what we got. Uh, I pumped on that transfer pump, but it's probably still got air in it. That's one way of getting air out <laughs> instead of loosening that. I just hit the the blow off on the fuel pressure gauge. Let's see if it'll go now.
that's interesting. She's got plenty of fuel pressure. Like twice what <laughs> what it says in the book. I need to set the low idle on this pump because she's pretty darn low. Okay. You set the low idle with the. Uh, you take these caps off. Yeah, there's an adjustment there for the low low idle speed. But 50 psi coming out of that transfer pump. I have not put the boost gauge on it yet, but I can't really build any boost without working it. I'm thinking that it just needs uh, to be adjusted up a little. Still going to put a boost gauge on it, but uh, in the meantime, till, uh, till the great flood stops uh i think i'll just give her a quarter a half turn on the uh fuel screw and i'll adjust the uh low idle and we'll call it good planters all service took all the insecticide boxes off so i guess we'll uh, go on to the next project or go back to the 4440 John Deere. I was waiting on a couple parts, but uh, they should be in tomorrow. So everybody have a good one. Thanks for watching.